In May 1996, a severe storm trapped several climbers high on Mount Everest as they were descending from the summit. A total of eight climbers died in what has become one of the deadliest single tragedies in the mountain's climbing history. One of them was Kurt Fisher, a renowned climbing guide from Seattle. This is his story. Scott Fisher was born on December 24, 1955. He grew up in Michigan and New Jersey. His relationship with the mountains began with a documentary film he watched in the 1970s when he was 14. His love of the mountain was deep and he would spend the rest of his life pursuing the peaks. He spent the next two years taking climbing courses and moved west when he graduated high school. He and his wife, Jeannie Fries, moved to Seattle in the Pacific Northwest in 1982, where they had two children. In 1984, Scott co-founded Mountain Madness with Wes Krause. The company began in the close proximity of the Cascade and Olympic mountain ranges. The company immediately expanded to include international adventures as well. Scott guided clients for climbing major mountain peaks around the world. In 1984, Fisher and Wes Krause made the second successful climb up the bridge icicle on Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. As a seasoned climbing instructor with a natural leadership style, he understood that the discovery and challenge of mountaineering could transform people's lives. He climbed not only for personal reward but also to help others. He was a supporter of the less fortunate and helped response for both AIDS research and the international relief organization CARE. Fisher was concerned not only with making the summit but also with keeping the world's great mountain sites clean. In 1994, he headed up the Everest Environmental Project, one of the first credible efforts to collect the debris that had been gathering for 40 years. His team cleared out 250 oxygen bottles from the South Gull and 5,000 pounds of garbage from the mountain. He received the David Brower Award for that remarkable job. In 1990, Fisher became the first American to summit Lutzi, the fourth highest mountain in the world. Two years later, in 1992, he climbed K2, one of the toughest 8,000 in the Karakoram. On their first summit bit, Fisher and Edwisters abandoned their attempt at Camp 3 to rescue Aliske Nikoforov, Thor Kaiser, and Shantal Maudit. They reached the summit on their second attempt without the use of supplemental oxygen with Charlie Mace. Through mountain madness, Fisher guided the 1993 climb for the cure and Denali in Alaska. The expedition raised $280,000 for the American Foundation for AIDS Research. In 1994, Scott Fisher and Rob Hess climbed Mount Everest without the use of bottle oxygen. With that ascent, Fisher had climbed six of the seven highest peaks on seven continents, with the exception of Vincent Massif in Antarctica. Next year, in 1995, he climbed Broad Peak in the Karakoram. He led his expedition safely down the mountain during a storm that killed many climbers, including Alice and her griefs, nearby and K2. In January 1996, Fisher climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa as part of an effort that raised $1 million in donation for care. Apart from the aforementioned mountains, Fisher was on the Matterhorn. El Capitan, Mount Blanc, Peak Communism, Aconcagua, and the Diamond Kulwa of Mount Kenya, to name just a few. He was one of few Americans to have summited K2 and the first American to climb Lutzi, the world's fourth highest mountain. In 
In May 1996, Fisher guided a team of 18 to climb Everest. The team included two guides, Neil Bidelman and Anatoly Bukriyip, and eight clients. The team was assisted by eight Sherpas led by Lop Sang Jangbu Sherpa. On May 6, the Mountain Madness team left base camp for the summit. First members of the team from Camp 4 at the South Col climbed through the night and summited in the early afternoon of Friday, May 10. They watched the weather patterns from above. There appeared to be a storm lower on the mountain, but they didn't know if it was snowing or just cloud cover. It was Fisher's habit to trail after the team and help those that needed special attention. His bridal men fast him on the descent though, Fisher was struggling and told bridal men that he was having a hard time. Fisher reached the summit after 3.45 p.m., much later than the chapter and around time of 2 p.m. He was exhausted from the ascent and becoming increasingly ill, possibly suffering from half, haze, or a combination of both. By late afternoon, winds were at 75 miles per hour. Snow was coming down so hard they couldn't see more than a couple of steps ahead, and they had to scream to be heard by someone standing at their side. Temperatures had plummeted, they were disoriented, and as panic began to set in, bridle men fought to keep the team calm and together. Shaking from hypothermia, bridle men and two of the stronger climbers found their way down to camp and collapsed. Bukriev, the first to return to high camp ordered by Fisher, went after the stranded climbers. Making numerous trips, he led and in some cases dragged team members back to camp. By 4.30 a.m. on Saturday, the whole team had met at to camp except Fisher. Fisher left the summit at about 4 p.m. Descended with Lopsing Jangbu Sherpa far up the way when the storm engulfed the upper slopes of the mountain. Gasping, he hurled himself along the southeast ridge balcony. He asked Lopsing to descend without him and send back Book Reeve for help. Scott's only hope of survival was to reach the relative safety of a tent at Camp 4, fetched 450 meters below at the south call. In a frigid whiteout and battling extreme gales, he collapsed on the snow about 50 meters below the balcony. He exhibited paradoxical undressing, commonly associated with hypothermia. He wrapped up his oxygen mask and gloves and opened his down jacket. Engulfed in the torrid storm, Exposed and alone on the mountain at night, Fisher deteriorated over the next 15 hours. On May 11, when the storm subsided, two Sherpas reached Fisher and Gao Ming Ho, leader of a Taiwanese expedition who was also caught in the storm. They managed to revive Gao, but Fisher was in deep coma and barely breathing. Fisher's chances of survival were slim, and they left him bundled up with an oxygen bottle as they worked to get Gao to a lower camp. Two days later, on Monday, Gao and Beckweather Abdullahs were airlifted from the mountains by Anifali's helicopter. Climber Ed Wister stole outside a line that Bukriyip made several attempts to climb after Fisher, but the weather was too severe and he had to turn back. Finally, he reached Fisher late on Saturday, but Fisher had died. Bukriyip shrouded Fisher's upper torso and moved his body up the main climbing route. His body remains just below the balcony on every triangular face at about 8,400 meters. Lopsang Jangbu Sherpa died in an avalanche in the fall of 1996 on another expedition to Everest.
and Bukri died in December 1987 in an avalanche in Annapurna. Fisher's climbing forum Mountain Bendis was bought in 1987 by Keith and Christine Baskov, who also died in an avalanche on a mountain in China in 2006. Scott Fisher was a strong, determined climber who inspired others. He was charismatic and he really motivated people. He took great pleasure in getting his client to the top. He was 40 years old when he died. He joined others on the slopes of Mount Everest to serve as a perpetual reminder of the deadly seriousness of mountaineering. His spirit, however, will soar free in the mountains he so dearly loved. Thank you all so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel as there is much more yet to come.